I think few people in our community have had as bright of a spotlight shown upon them at such a young age as Hawks and Gracie did. But I can also say that Hawks and Gracie radiated that energy right back. Now, unfortunately, sometimes the fire that burns twice as hot lasts half as long, and we lost Hawks and Gracie at only the age of 19. Now, in the 20 years since his passing, we can say that his life had impact, and he's still remembered even now. Now, I didn't know Hawkson as well as some other folks, even though we hung out a few times, so I'm going to leave more of the personal antidotes to folks that knew him better. What I do have is a treasure trove of Hawkson Gracie footage, competition footage from his blue and purple belt days, which is as far as he got. Uh, a lot of this hasn't been seen before, um, so please enjoy. Hawkson was the oldest child of Hicks and Gracie. He competed in the Rooster and later as he started to fill out in the light featherweight division, but definitely had a slider build more reminiscent of his uncle Hoyler and his grandfather Alio than his more stoutly built father Hickson. Hawkson claimed three Pan American titles between 1998 and 2000 in the blue and purple belt categories. He would develop that same type of perfected basic style of his father, albeit with some time he needed to develop his strength, his foundations, and his fundamentals. But you can also see here, he had what I would term as a kind of uh, relentlessness and emotion to his game. From footage that you can see and every interaction that I had with the parrot, you could always tell that Hickson and Hoxson had a pretty special bond. Hoxson went even as far to get a tattoo on himself saying Hickson Gracie, number one dad. So here we have some matches of Hoxson Gracie at the Hickson Gracie Cup in 1998. And you can tell how seriously Hoxson took this because he came in with a shaved head. And this is reminiscent of when his father Hickson Gracie fought uh, Takata in the very first Pride. Uh, it was a big deal that he shaved his head, kind of showing his um, wear spirit. Hair was a big thing to Hickson uh, for a long time too. Like he sported a pretty long hairdo. Um, if you look back at the early UFC footage when he's cornering his brother Hoist Gracie. Uh, so him shaving his head is just kind of letting people know how seriously he's taking this, how seriously Hoxson's taking this match at this point. That had a huge ripple effect on a lot of us, too. Uh, so when we were kind of preparing for battle, as you would say, um, some of us would shave our heads. Even these days, some competitors will shave their heads, or a lot of times we'll see them dyeing some crazy color uh, as part of, like, kind of battle-ready or um, kind of team unification. In addition, if you look at Hoxson's gi in this case, uh, he's got a number of patches on there. Of course, the Hickson logo is on the top. The Gracie Umatai logo, um, the, the headquarters, his grandfather's like, you know, kind of where that side of the family, the alias side of the family really kind of uh, started off from. And the Hoyler Gracie patch on his pants.
Okay, listen, everybody that's not a coach or a competitor needs to get out of the fence. The police have told us that we got to get this place organized or they're going to shut it down. So if you're not a competitor or a coach, you need to get out of the fence and sit down in the bleachers, please. And if you are a competitor, sit down on the floor. If not, we're going to have to stop the tournament. Find a seat, please.
chair, please. Please, school to stay on the mat. Sit on the chair, please. Boys of authority, sit in the chair, coach. Thank you. Come on, Hoxie. For the record, I think Hoxon's confusion here is he obviously didn't tap to the armbar. I think he was defending it fairly well. But if you didn't notice, the beanbag came in. Time had obviously expired and he did wind up losing this match.
I'll remember Hoxton as a passionate guy. He clearly wanted to uphold the legacy of his family and of his father in particular. He definitely had a fighting spirit, but I think he was after something beyond that as well. In the last months of his life, he was pursuing a modeling contract, and he had originally gone to the East Coast to pursue that dream. When news of his passing came out, many of us, of course, were in shock. He clearly had so much potential in life, not just as a competitor. Hickson has gone on to say that that loss was the worst knockout of his life. He never fought again, and it was some years before he even found it in himself to get on the mat again. Crone Gracie, who was more apt to be skateboarding in the parking lot while his brother was training, found more inspiration to train more, and carries a portrait of his brother and his gi during competitions. Coming to terms with his loss, Hickson has stated that he now understands that there is no tomorrow. We have to do everything as if there was no tomorrow. In his youth, I think Hawkson knew this already. He may have left us 20 years ago, but his spirit lives on.